But then I started working remotely, and everything changed. Hi, my name is Jon Olsen. My name, uh, I'm a happiness engineer with Automatic, as Rachel said. And today I'm going to share with you some things that I learned in the past three years working remotely. And I would like to say to begin that it's clear that the world is changing. And work is changing as well. Because this cartoon that I just showed here is from the New Yorker magazine from two years ago. But more and more people are working remotely. But what does that actually mean? So first, let's define what is remote work. There are, we can say there's four kinds of jobs. Anybody here who works remotely already? Anybody here who works in an office? Good, so we have the two sides. So there's the office job, where you go to the office every day. And then there's a flexible job, where you work at an office, but sometimes you work at home. Then there's a remote job, and at the remote job, everybody else is at the office, and you're working from home. And then there's what I do, which is technically a distributed job, where nobody goes to the office. Everybody stays home. So in Automatic, we have, uh, say for the Tumblr acquisition, we have a thousand people all working from their homes, in their home offices, co-working spaces, cafes, or anywhere, as I'll get to. I learned about working remotely when I first applied for Automatic. I was working um, in an office on a WordPress consultancy gig, and I read that you can actually work for a company in San Francisco living anywhere in the world. And I thought, this is magnificent, because at this point, my career wasn't going very well here in Spain, and I was actually considering moving to London or Copenhagen or San Francisco, somewhere else where there would be IT jobs. But then in came the remote work, and here I am. It's a brave new world, and I will say that it is definitely a better way of working. But it also has its own particular challenges. If you already work from home, you're going to recognize some of these things. If you don't, I hope to give you a little bit of insight into how it works. The first thing I realized when I started working remotely, there's no commute. You don't go anywhere. That's a little bit strange, but it's a nice thing, because I'm sure that you had the experience where you have to be at a meeting at 10 a.m., you're late, you get in your car, you go out on the road, and there's a traffic jam. And now you're there, you're stuck in traffic, and you're half an hour late. This doesn't happen when you work remotely, because you might as well you know, be a minute late with your coffee, but everything happens online. So you can save a lot of time in not going back and forth. And if you think about it, if you only go half an hour to work and half an hour back, that's still five hours a week. That's five hours that you could be spending doing something else, being with family, friends, developing WordPress. The other beauty is that you can work anywhere. And in the beginning, I thought, this is fantastic. I can work anywhere with my laptop. I'm going to go to the beach. Which turned out to be less productive than I hoped. Because if you've ever been outside with your laptop, especially the new blank screens, there is no productivity. You cannot see anything. In the same way, I have some colleagues, and I try this myself, who wake up, take the laptop in bed, and start working. No, I, I cannot do that. I try going to a park, same thing, you're outside. What works? I found cafes. Cafes are good, but then you have to pay for the coffee to at least be nice. Or you can go to a co-working if you want to be with other people. Or, as I have found works best for me, having a home office. Because with all the things, all the flexibility, being anywhere in the world, just with a basic internet connection, I still found that it's good to have a routine. Because if you consider before, we're going to work, we leave our house, we go out, we experience the world, come into a new place, and now we're working. So your mind has a chance to change the environment, and you're getting ready. But if you don't have that travel time, your mind doesn't switch. So I found that having a routine to get me started simulates that experience. So I will get up around 8 a.m., I'll go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, I'll go downstairs and meditate, I'll take my dog out, and then I'll exercise to get that crucial daylight in, then have a shower, and by 10 a.m., I'm at my desk. So that's the way that I found to kind of just make my mind go into work mode. And then, when sitting down to work, it's important how the environment is like. And so I discovered that just because you're working from home, you still have the same challenges as you have at an office. Because at an office, what do you get? At least you get a desk, 
you get a chair and a computer, right? Now, I had this, I had this setup where when I moved houses, I didn't get my home office set up yet. So what did I do? I sat at my dining room table in an IKEA chair. Anybody here who knows IKEA chairs for sitting and eating? They're very, very stable. When you sit down, the legs go out, and the backrest is non-existent. So not thinking about this and just working either at my dining room table or my couch, after a while, I started developing shoulder pains. And so I realized, okay, now it's time to actually you know, do something about this. So now I have a proper um, desk that can also be raised so you can be standing, and a, an ergonomic chair. And these things are just as important at home as they are in an office, maybe even more so, because there's nobody looking after you. You have to look after yourself. In a similar way, and I'll get into this a little bit more, you have to tune your mind into when you're working and when you're not working. So <clears throat> this may seem a little bit strange, but what I found number one works is working in one space. Have one designated space to work. It might be a home office, it might just be a desk, it might be a certain spot, but in this spot, we're in work mode. So I have made this into my home office where I work in the office and I don't work anywhere else if I can avoid it. But at the same time, I've experimented with using all the senses. So for example, I use music. Anybody here listens to music when they work? And the rest of you are sleeping. Okay, no, just kidding. <laughs> No, music is a nice addition to the day, but what I have found is that I actually take certain internet radio stations and I only listen to that while working. So if this genre of music is playing, we're working. If this genre of music is playing, we are not working. It works somewhat. And I've also experimented doing the same with smells. You know in Macadonna, you can get those cheap candles? Una de cinnamon, otra de vanilla. So I experimented with like, okay, can I subconsciously program myself to let my brain know that when the vanilla is on, we're not working? It kind of works. It's not great. So really what works is separating the things. Because when you're working from home, there are so many distractions, if you let there be. And the way that I realized this, I mean, I actually thought about calling this talk how to stay productive when your entire house is a distraction. And what I'm talking about here is not just the average phone calls, messages, Facebook, Reddit, all the things we know we shouldn't be doing during work. I don't do those, but I can be caught up with other things. Oh, I have to go make a cup of coffee. Oh, there's this dish I forgot to put into the lavarillas. There's this little thing I have to do. It's amazing how our mind can take us anywhere apart from what we're supposed to be doing. That's because, I will admit, I'm a procrastinator. So this is why I have these little challenges. But I also have to say that from my perspective, I don't have kids. So for those of you that do have kids and work from home, wow, well done. I also don't have cats. So I don't know how cats behave when you're working from home, but I've seen a lot of colleagues that have tails walking around on the screen when they're talking on Zoom. Have you seen this? So with dogs, at least, I can give you a tip, because my dog is very annoying. Oh, you're working? Can we play now? Can we play now? Can we play now? <laughs> and I feel bad, because of course I want to play, but not right now. So my colleague gave me a tip. She said, if you're working and your dog is annoying, have it close to you. Dogs are pack animals. If you move their bed to your desk, they will stay there and be happy. And it worked. So I cannot do, tell you what to do with your kids, and I cannot tell you what to do with everything else, but just know the distractions are plentiful. So it's about finding ways around those distractions. And one of those ways is to have clear boundaries. And what I mean by boundaries is that you have anybody else living at home with you. It could be family, it could be roommates, whatever it is, they need to understand when you're working. For those of you that already work from home, you may have said this to people before. Yes, I am really working. It may be that I'm just sitting here looking at my laptop, but I'm actually doing work. You're like, yeah. <laughs> well, this is how I do my work, so please don't interrupt me. And this is where it comes to setting healthy boundaries. So number one, if you're in the office, you can leave the door open, but if I'm in here, don't disturb me. When I come out, talk to me. That works. Now, why is this important? 
Those of you that work from home, hands up again. Can I please get to shout out what role do you do? Diseñador, desarrollador, otra cosa? Okay. All these things have in common that they are knowledge work. So when we sit down in front of the computer, we are doing knowledge work. And it's been scientifically shown that if you get interrupted, if you are in the flow, you're just working and everything, like, mm, and then you have interruption, it takes an average of 15 minutes to get back into that flow. So it's extremely important to not be interrupted while you're doing something important, and instead do that afterwards. So one thing can be, like I said, telling people. It can also just be closing the door, because I found that if you have guests over, especially if they're not of the um, internet age, they may not understand that you're working. So just closing the door might be enough. But more importantly, it's about setting expectations. And that as well goes for communication, which brings me to my next point. Because working remotely, you have some distinct challenges in terms of communication. I work at Automatic, and at Automatic, we do all of our main communication in Slack. Anybody here uses Slack? Yes, most of us. And Slack is text-only communication by default, and that's how we do it on Automatic. Now, of course, there are also audio calls and video calls, but when you communicate only in writing, there are particular challenges. There was a study from Yale way back when that looked at how people perceive when you're talking to them. And as it turns out, the actual words that we say are only 7% of the full communication. 38% comes from our voice, our tonality, how we say it. And a full 55% comes from the body language. So in Automatic, we talked a little bit about the concept of bandwidth. Not your 56K modem versus your fiber, but bandwidth in communication. So if we say that if it's only in text, that's low bandwidth. If you go to an audio call, medium bandwidth. You go on a Zoom video call, high bandwidth. But if you are in person, face to face, that's full bandwidth. And in my opinion, nothing can ever replace that. Which brings me to my next point, that it's important to socialize. So if you're living with other people, this is not a problem, but if you live alone and you are working from home, there is technically no reason to leave your house. Some days, if I didn't have my dog, I didn't have to go out. And I do have a colleague who says that he will stay in for three days at a time. He gets the groceries delivered and just stays in. So it's really important when we're in front of a screen all day to actually go out and meet other people and have that connection. Which also brings me to going AFK. Now, this is a term that we use in Automatic. Anybody here who knows what AFK means? One, but you're cheating, you work at Automatic. <laughs> AFK, <laughs> AFK is an English acronym that means away from keyboard. And I don't know about you, but I tend to be caught up and I get really focused and then I forget to have breaks. What I didn't say in my routine thing is that I will also put my lunch on my calendar so I don't forget. Because there's nobody saying, hey, we're going to lunch, you wanna come? No, that doesn't happen, so you have to do it yourself. And so throughout the day, it's very important, I find, to just step away from the computer, know that you have a real world before you go back into the digital one. In the same way, when getting off work, I also try to stay away from screens. In fact, I just try to leave my laptop in the office and not open it again. Even when logging off, I will have a shutdown routine where I turn off the security so that I don't accidentally log on to work again and start working. Because again, you're working from anywhere. So you have to set your boundaries. And finally, it's about disconnecting. And this, I think, applies to anybody that is working in front of a computer in an office. But what I'm talking about here is doing things that are truly offline. There's no computers, there's no phones, there's no internet connection. Now, where can you do this? Out in nature. A la playa. Without the laptop. Going to the woods. Going for a hike, going for a run. I think these are incredibly important because we are all sitting at a computer all day, and while many of us have given up smoking, now they say that sitting is the new smoking. 
So now I at least try to get outside and move, but I find that being in nature is kind of like an antidote to all the technical input. So to answer the question, do I work from home or am I living at work? The answer is both. But it works if you're separated. So the world is changing and work is changing. And my question to you, if you don't work remotely, is remote work in your future? Thank you. Any question? Hola. Any question? Hola, hola. Uh, vale. Buena. <coughs> so, yeah, more than a question, it's just uh, sharing my experience because I also work in a distributed company. Everybody from yeah, home, uh, co working, whatever. Um, and there is a point that has been really important for me, and you don't mention it, so uh -huh. I would like to mention. Um, more than um, these um, times of how many time can I be focused and when I am distracted, how long I take to be again in productive mode. It's quite a common thing, but to me, this approach never works. And what really worked to me is um, mix what are the distractions with the, um, the tasks that I have. Okay. So I try I, to know up front the task I have to do one or two days up front because more it's a bit difficult. And then I try to pack them and schedule the interruptions as, um, as disconnections. Uh -huh. And managing this, like I will do this, that I need two hours, then I can do these two hours and then I go, go out shopping for half an hour. And then I got the groceries for lunch, then I work one hour for this task and then and this kind of uh, approach worked for me because at the beginning I was trying to keep like yeah, two hours, a break, two hours, yeah, uh, yeah, and these yeah. things, and this never worked because it depends on the tasks and to me it's more important the time that you invest and focus in the task than the focus time at work. So, right. Just so, you, so, you, so you build in breaks where you go and do something else. For example, you said go on the grocery shopping and you put that in your schedule. No, oh, you do it, okay. But the point is to give yourself work time and then you go out. I think that's very, very good. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Other preguntas or other questions? Uh, that's congrats for the conference. It's very interesting. But uh, I want to bring in just one question: Is uh, you have settled everything? But what do you think is going to be the first step to do when you decide to start to work remotely? For, for me, like a person, and how I translate that wish to the, to the company. Thank you. Can you say that one more time? The first thing? Uh, the first thing, uh, it's what, how it starts to become a remote or this right. worker. Okay, yeah, sure. From so, my point and my company. Thank you. Absolutely. So now there's actually, uh, I've learned about since coming into this world that there's actually a lot of companies that do remote work. Some of the more famous ones are, of course, automatic. Um, I believe Human Made does the same as well. There's also um, Basecamp, which is very famous and has been you know, remote for years and years and years. But there are some resources that um, I believe it's, there's one called uh, WeWork, or it's WeWork Remotely. But the point is that just like you have job databases, you have databases for remote work. And so more and more and more of these are coming up. And now also, ironically, I just read that with the coronavirus, they're asking people to stay home. So it's actually a forced experiment in having people work from home. And so I didn't go much past the headline, but it said, are they coming back to the office? Nobody knows. So it might be changing just with the coronavirus, but there's plenty of resources out there. And if you want, I can give you my card afterwards and I can send you those actual links. I don't remember them right now. Cool. Anyone else? Anybody else here would like to share their experiences with working from home? Well, I also work from home, but I do have kids. <laughs> so my day is a little bit different. I would start at 8, I'd be up about 7, start at 8, and then try and get the whole day done as quickly as possible without any breaks and try and finish around 4, 4.30 and then have my day do all the other bits afterwards. Um, but d 
dividing my day up to have little breaks in between, it just makes it so long, and then I don't have any time, family time. So I think it's just finding the right pattern. It took me a long time to get into that pattern as well, but I think it, you have to find what works for you mm. as well. And do you find also that you don't have to travel? Does that give you more time with the family, or is it... Yes, but I, I agree with you that not traveling, you miss that kind of time disconnecting yeah. and getting back into it. You're, you're just kind of thrown into it, thrown out of it, and I miss that a little bit. But I also worked from home before, so I was, I'm kind of used to it as well. So, yeah. Um, so. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Rachel. All right. Anybody else? No? I will say thank you all for staying so late. Thank you for listening. And if you want to work remotely, I can you know, point you to some resources like over here. But thank you all, and have a great rest of your day.